highest degree or percentage of growth in both of those categories uh, among our clients. Interestingly, the third area uh, of opportunity and, and where we're seeing um, a great deal of activity this year is leasing companies starting to take a much harder look at their expense levels. <clears throat> this has always been traditionally a top-line business. That is, management uh, focuses on uh, total revenue and, and annual uh, uh, business volume. But an extraordinarily weak economy where uh, that volume is hard to find, more and more companies are uh, focusing on what can I do to cut expenses, to reset, if you will, uh, my business model to a new reality of at least temporarily lower uh, new business volume. This um, idea of grim confidence, is this pretty widespread? I think it is. Uh, there, there are certainly uh, leasing companies out there that continue to do uh, very well. Uh, most of those, in my experience, uh, are in uh, independent uh, leasing companies or in captives. Uh, no disrespect to the banks, uh, but bank leasing companies are faced with uh, a, a host of pretty significant challenges from regulator focus to extremely high liquidity in the marketplace that's impacting their ability to price. You mentioned in the early 1970s that there was a lack of understanding about equipment leasing. When did the industry begin to be understood? Boy, I'm not sure I could point to um, anything like a, a, a specific year or, or several years. I think that's been over time. Uh, maybe think of it as... Uh, a darker shade of gray becoming a, a much lighter shade of gray over uh, 10 years or perhaps more. Uh, it certainly has made an impact on how we uh, conduct our business. Uh, customers, uh, whether they be vendors, manufacturers on the one hand or end users on the other, uh, almost all of them have had some experience with leasing now and uh, uh, some of the sort of new, dramatic things we were able to introduce aren't so new and dramatic any longer. And what that's done is, uh, I think at least, created a need for uh, better transparency in our industry. Um, and I think the market leaders in the business uh, have moved in that direction. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, the obstacles are much greater today than they were in the early days, even though there was a lack of understanding, but um, and, and that most of uh, what the industry is going through over the past decade is really uh, due to outside factors. But are there some ways, some ways that the, maybe the industry and, and its members have changed? Uh, maybe they're less creative or less entrepreneurial. Are there some different ways that they can approach business today that might help them, aside from looking for economic uh, improvement? Uh, I, if you think of an industry that uh, has now been around uh, for uh, 50 plus years, the association, of course, is celebrating its uh, 50th uh, convention uh, here in a few months. Uh, the opportunities to be entrepreneurial or creative uh, are, I think, less uh, today than they were 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, some of the creativity and, and uh, entrepreneurial uh, activities that the, the industry uh, exhibited, uh, say, in the 1990s, that some of the very aggressive uh, tax structure transactions uh, turned out to perhaps be uh, more uh, creative and entrepreneurial than uh, maybe they should have been. Uh, so uh, it's not always uh, a positive factor. But where the creativity today is, 
businesses and where the entrepreneurial activities are, uh, I think are not so much in the product development uh, as in the application and management and execution of those products. And I think there are all kinds of opportunities for improvements in those areas based on our work with clients. I want to go back to the perfect storm study for a moment, because I know it was uh, probably the, the biggest hit research piece that the uh, foundation ever put out. Um, what was it about that study that was so significant? Um, well, I think there were several things. Uh, first of all, it was you know, very topical and timely. I mean, people were very interested in, in what was going on in the industry. Uh, uh, why were uh, so many players led by uh, individuals, management that were so well known in the industry having such difficulties? Um, so I think uh, the two elements, timely and, and the fact that uh, there were some significant and well-known players that were struggling at the time, uh, certainly contributed to that level of interest. But I think the third element was that it was the first time uh, a research uh, effort or analysis of the industry had been done in that way. Uh, it was a uh, very deep dive into uh, these companies uh, using primarily interview techniques uh, uh, with uh, the management of those companies and, and others involved with those companies. And uh, I think the uh, mechanism, if you will, the process that was used to complete the study was new and different at the time, at least in our industry, uh, and uh, produced uh, some very interesting results uh, that are still used today in terms of, uh, of a lesson or of a learning. Uh, we uh, still get uh, thousands of uh, clicks into our website every year with uh, people uh, downloading uh, that survey, that study. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure the reason that they do that is for training purposes uh, for younger management coming up in those organizations. That's interesting, John. Um, a couple of times during the interview, if you want to take a drink of water or just take a pause, a couple of times during the interview, um, <clears throat> the visual um, of you stalled. And uh can't even hear you now. Well, just now you can. <laughs> <laughs> but no, your voice was moving, but I couldn't hear you. So there's like a, a little bit of time lapse or something. So I wonder if you wouldn't mind if I could ask you a couple of questions I already asked you just because I want to make sure I have it. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I wondered if you could just one more time just summarize your illustrious career in leasing and, and how you got into it. I'm sorry to ask you this again, but I just want to make sure that I have that. This was the topic we started off with, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. How you got into the industry and, and really um, what were some high a couple of your really big high points in your industry, in your experience? Uh, well, the question is, how did I get into the industry? And, and the answer is, I just uh, finished graduate school. Uh, and uh, first job out of graduate school was with the Marine National Exchange Bank in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I joined them. Uh, in their uh, executive training program, as it was called. And there were a group of us, and, and part of our work in that training program was uh, to uh, complete a white paper, a study uh, of products or areas of interest that the bank was not involved in. Uh, the uh, purpose was to come back with recommendations should become involved or, or should stay uninvolved in those particular areas. Uh, and the topic that, uh, that I picked uh, literally out of a hat uh, was equipment leasing, uh, a subject uh, that I frankly knew next to nothing about uh, and heard very little about even though uh, my graduate school was in business administration. Uh, and so uh, I took that on. Uh, I think 
grand total of about three months, um, and completed a white paper and a study of the industry and recommended uh, to bank management that it was an area that uh, should in fact be considered. Uh, and I remember the, the three reasons I suggested that. Uh, one is that leasing was new to banks uh, in 1971. Uh, it had only recently been approved as a banking activity by the Federal Reserve. But we were already seeing uh, some of the, the banks, even in Milwaukee, uh, offering equipment leasing services. And we thought from a defensive and a competitive position that, that we needed to do the same thing. Number two, uh, in those days, in, in the early 70s, uh, leasing had uh, more significant tax advantages than perhaps uh, it does today. Uh, and there was an opportunity for the bank and the bank holding company uh, to use those tax advantages. And third, uh, in Wisconsin, the, the primary uh, trade territory for the bank at that time, uh, there were a number of manufacturers and vendors, uh, and the concept of developing uh, vendor programs to be able to build a business uh, was attractive. Uh, so again, I, I recommended that the bank uh, get into the business. Uh, the bank accepted that uh, recommendation uh, and asked me to actually uh, start uh, moving the bank in that direction. I, uh, uh, at that time, there were, oh, a few uh, companies that offered bank leasing programs. And, and what that meant is that uh, they partnered with the bank or a group of banks uh, entering into the equipment leasing industry and providing uh, their much greater experience and skill levels to the bank to help them get in the business. U.S. Leasing was a company that was doing that at the time, and, and Equilise uh, was a company doing it at the time. And uh, we chose Equilise uh, out of New York at the time to, uh, to help us get into the business. And um, in a sentence or two or three, can you leave us with some personal words of wisdom that served you well or things you wish to be remembered about you? Wow, that's a tough question. <laughs> Uh, I, I think if, maybe if I were to, to try to, to summarize it, uh, uh, I've uh, loved being in this business. Uh, I was a practitioner, as I call it, from 1971 and until uh, 1992, let's call it. And then from 1992 until today, uh, a consultant and advisor to the industry. Uh, I've always been humbled by uh, the opportunity to, to work in this industry and, and with the people uh, who uh, help manage companies in this space. Uh, they are remarkably bright, uh, remarkably creative, and remarkably sharing uh, in uh, their day-to-day -day activities uh, in this business. And uh, it's always been a thrill to me to uh, come to industry gatherings, uh, see people that uh, I've seen for now the better part of 40 years, but also to meet people who I haven't known before and watch that same enthusiasm and creativity uh, in the next generation. Thank you, John. I'm going to uh, review the, review the uh, interview and see what the quality is and, um, and then share, share, share some of it with you after we do a little editing. And um, Oh, I can put myself on the screen now. <clears throat> Let me see here. Okay, there I am. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I'm really concerned about Skype quality, but I'll um, I'll take a look at it. And if we don't like it, if you don't like it, and I don't like it, we can do this at the convention live okay. and get a really good quality one. But All and right. now, and now you've had lots of practice with the questions, <laughs> <laughs> and you're very good, very good interview. Really enjoyed it personally. Thank you. Thank you for making right. the time while you're at your well, vacation home. Well, I'm I had a vacation.
vacation for two weeks, but now I'm working. <laughs> oh, I bet you are. But a nice environment to work in, I'm sure. Very so. You're right on a think, lake? You're, you're done, well, several lakes. Uh -huh, nice. There's one right over that way and another one right over that way and one right over that way. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Your, uh, your daughter got through the uh, hurricane okay? Yeah, it really wasn't a big event at Virginia Beach like we were expecting. So her power was on. I mean, we did leave her place. And then <clears throat> when we went back, the power was on. Everything was fine. Super. Yeah, the only thing is I got home to my home office and my main computer isn't working. But um, I, I have a computer guy. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> okay, well, you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thank you again. Bye-bye. I'll speak with you later. All righty, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, bye-bye.